Hello and welcome back to another episode of Exploring the Alphabet, the travel series where we go to a different city for every single letter of the alphabet. It is episode five, it is letter E, and it's probably the most beautiful day that we've had on the series so far. Now I know what you're thinking, Joel, why are, uh, hi, you all right? Yeah, good, thank you. That is so awkward. Why are we not at an airport? Why are we not at an airport? And I can tell you why, because even though every city we're visiting on this series will be outside of England, we don't require an airport for this one. So I'll let you have a little guess where we might be going. If you do work it out, if you know your geography and know that we're on letter E, it probably won't be too hard to figure where we're going. And let me tell you, weirdly enough, this place is probably the one I mo feel most excited about. There's so many different exciting things that we can do on this one. So it's going to be fun. But first of all, I've got, I think, about a 10-hour round trip. So we best get the half of it done right now. I will see you when we're in a different country. Meow. For anyone wondering what happened with the encounter when I said hi to somebody, she was the lady was running by, and when she ran by, she went, <laughs> I should have just gone. That's right, the superstar is here. <laughs> I'm only joking, I'm joking. The superstar is a nerd. <laughs> We are halfway through. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Okay then. Up you get. We'll try that again, shall we? <gasps> we are halfway through our journey. And I've literally just nearly busted my bladder. Because I've been, I've been dying for a Greg's on the way here. And every service is I pass, all you see is that McDonald's M sign. And this has gone through me, like hot knife through butter. And I was in agony because I needed a wee. So, and I finally come across the services. And no Greg's again, only a McDonald's. So we've got McDonald's. I don't know if my bladder was hurting that much because my jeans are that bloody tight. Or it was just because I, I needed, I was desperate for a wee. I've started, I've started using the McDonald's app because my mum swears by it and she's always like, you need to do it. You spend loads at McDonald's, you'll get loads of free stuff. She's right. I've been to McDonald's once and I got like 4,000 points on there, which means I got a free double cheeseburger. And you get loads of offers as well. So I got six chicken nuggets for 99p. I got a double cheeseburger that was free from the last order. Then I, I paid for some fries, a, a medium Coke, and obviously, cheese bite share box. Um, obviously, I will be saving some for Carrie for when I get home. I won't eat them all myself, <laughs> obviously. And I'm really impressed with this McDonald's. I'm at, I'm one, I'm, I'm at like a service is near Durham or something, I think, but... They actually put all the sauces in without me having to ask them. They put the straw in as well. And do you know what? Before we set off on the way back, it's only right that I share my little McDonald's secret with you. So whenever you get a, a double cheeseburger or a triple cheeseburger, first of all, you take out the onions and gherkins. I wish he'd have stayed there. You take out the onions and gherkins, unless you're a complete and utter dog. <laughs> and then once you've taken them out, is when the magic really happens. So we take them out now. Then you get two of your chicken nuggets. You bang them in there. And when you bang the two chicken nuggets in, you leave a mini gap in between the nuggets because that is where your cheese melts are, are gonna go. Just down that center there. You only need, you only need three. And then you squish it all together like so. And before you know it, you have the ultimate burger. See you at letter E, everyone. We have arrived at our destination. 
and if you've not worked it out yet or if you can't work it out from the giant castle behind me we are in Edinburgh Scotland oh I'm so happy that I've arrived in Scotland I can't wait to go and get me iron brew and wear my kilt around town <sighs> what a bloody drive by the way but I am used to driving long distances and usually the long distance trips are to London which is the same boring road whereas this was quite different nice and peace peaceful even though now I can barely bloody walk because my legs have seized up but after you get past Newcastle to Scotland there's not really much going on in between and the views you get doing that drive are literally breathtaking so I do urge anyone to drive from England to Scotland because it's worth it just for the views itself now one thing that you might not know is that Carrie has family here in Edinburgh her granny's Scottish her mum's Scottish actually when I told her mum that I was coming here she said how jealous she was and I'm going to have a great actually she didn't say I'm going to have a great time she said oh I'm so I'm so jealous you, you're going to have an absolute hoot and I said a hoot what's a hoot and I said anyway I've got to go so I best go and get me boots and she said have you got any snacks with you why don't you take some fruit and I said I've not got any snacks but I've got me e-cig so I could go and have a toot <laughs> anyway don't know what I'm doing in the middle of this city let's get to the hotel <laughs> I've just stepped into our hotel room for the first time and before I show you it I want to just clarify that I am um, nearly 30 and I've got a beard I'm not 15 and the reason I say that is because my new hotel room has bunk beds <laughs> it's like them um, them little cabins you get on the ferry and the good thing is I'm here for two nights so I can experiment test the waters on both beds so tonight I'll sleep in the top tomorrow I'll sleep in the bottom and the best thing is you even get a telly for each one so it's we're definitely going up in the world slowly but surely but you haven't seen the best bit yet because for the first time on the series we have got a private bathroom Ooh. where's the shower it's not just a, uh, is it behind please be behind this door oh there she is come on you even get tea and coffee at this place and a little guard the must have knew was coming and out of this very window here lies the capital of Scotland and little does it know that tomorrow we're going to take it by storm. But first, before Betty Boogles, we're going for a little explore. I'm in some nice attire. I feel like I'm dressed right to visit Edinburgh Castle. So that is where we're making our way down to. But on to Edinburgh. Got a quick, uh, quick few facts for you. Edinburgh is the greenest city in the UK, which clarifies what I was talking about earlier today, saying about all the amazing views I saw on my way down here. And because we're going to Edinburgh Castle, I thought I'd give you some facts about that. Now, I could bore you with loads of histor historical facts about Edinburgh Castle, but you don't want to hear that, do you? You want the fun facts. So, Edinburgh Castle is built on top of an extinct volcano. Knowing my luck, the volcano will go off tonight. Now I'm here. It was also once home to an elephant. And for once, I'm not filling your head with a load of rubbish. So Google it if you don't believe me. And Edinburgh Castle hosted the first ever fired work display in Edinburgh in the 1500s. I am actually stood beside it now. Well, I'm much below it. We've got a bit of a walk till we get outside of it. But it is all lit up at night. And I mean, it looks, it doesn't look as, it isn't as lit up as I was expecting. It looks more like a restaurant when they've got fancy lights outside. But I'll, I'll give you a little view now. I'm currently on my... I've got a new light. 
and you like that you plug to your phone but it's that bright it stuns you and you can't see where you're going i nearly just took a tumble down them stairs like i say i'm walking up some stairs because edinburgh castle's built up real high so apparently this takes you to edinburgh castle but when i was walking on the path at the bottom of them stairs i could just hear loads of like rowdiness loads of people chanting and all stuff like that so i'm not sure if when you get there it's going to be like rammed or something even that there's a football match or got something going on nearby but considering this is the capital of scotland i, I realized this earlier on it's like a ghost town it's so weird and i don't i, I, I wasn't expecting it to be so quiet but we're coming up to the castle now it does look beautiful. You literally can see nothing around you. It's complete pitch black. But the Edinburgh Castle is just lit up all bright and it stands out so much. I can't even see if there's anyone around me, which makes me feel great because I don't like people watching me when I'm filming. <laughs> right, I'm walking up to the door now because they've invited me for a tea party. I'm just going to go see if they've got any um, haggis. You got any haggis in, in here, guys? Or um, what else do you do? Find Mars Bar, if you don't mind. <gasps> that creaked so bad. It was like a trap door. But here we go. It says, please keep the gate clear. And I'm not going to uh, go getting in trouble at Edin Edinburgh Castle because that night might come and get me there for a start or down there looks like there's some kind of like cellars or something that they could knock me in but I'm going to give you a close up view of this building and up the top we've got the Scottish flags flying high keep Scotland in my heart I love Scotland Scotland is the best place on earth. It does haggis and does fried Mars bars. Don't know, I turned into a farmer then. <laughs> No idea what all that noise was though but it sounded like it was coming from the towers like attached to the castle but behind it so unless there's like a giant dinner party going on but it's not like open to as peasants it, it, there's definitely something going on up there but i'm not gonna go investigate i'm not gonna go investigate and push things too far to be honest though if um if you also want to see the tower uh the castle in the light we will be walking by it like over and over again over the next couple of days just because it is so close to our hotel so you will see it in the light too like properly so don't stress if you're a castle lover if you're not a castle lover you're in luck because tomorrow i have got a lot of different activities that are so unique and exciting and the day is going to end with a lesson so you want to stick around for that one What are you doing there, mate? You'll never guess what. So, my hotel is on that road there. Across the road, there's a Greg's. Look. And it's open at this time, 9 pm. What kind of Greg's is open till 9 pm? They actually are open. Come on. That's it, thank you. Thank you. 7.50. Jesus Christ. You've ripped me off here, love. No wonder you stay up until this time. Robin cats. Meow. There you go. What? Yeah, uh, no, I'm good, thank you. What time does it close? Nine. Nine? Yeah. How come it stays open so late? Uh, this store is open today. 
Really? Yeah. In England, they close at about five o'clock. I was really, I was really excited to see you. Thank you. See, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh yeah, I'll take that as well. Paid for it, haven't I? I forgot I'd paid for that. You may as well stick a couple extra in if you're closing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm from England. Well, yeah, I paid. Yeah, am I good to go? Thank you. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. There we go. Late night Greg's. <laughs> what a result. And I only have to walk across the road to my room. Oh, the only problem is the rice cold. But we can live with it. Oh, <laughs> don't get killed by your cab, Joel. Yeah, we can live with it. Hey, what's that? We have trams in the capital as well. I'm going to get, I'm going to have loads of, I'm going to sit in top bunk. I'm going to sit in top, top bunk. I'm going to eat all this so there's loads of crumbs in my bed and then I'm just going to go to the bottom bunk. That's what. That's what, why you must get an extra bed because Greg's is across the road. Look, my friends are across the road, but... Yay! Hello, good to see you guys. Good to see you. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you, mate. See you. See you soon. See you soon. And a dog. There we go. Happy days. Look, everyone's there. Living the dream. Good to see you. He didn't want to talk. Right, come on then. And we're back to HQ. I'm, I'm literally ecstatic. I don't know why. I just feel like I've got loads of energy. I've got like tons of energy. I wish everywhere was open now, just so we could get stuck into it. But tomorrow morning, <laughs> we're gonna absolutely smash the day. This is gonna be the best episode yet. I can feel it, I can feel it. So I've got steak bake, some sausage rolls, triple, triple chocolate muffin. And to see the night out, like all Scottish people do, before bed, the drink iron brew. It's, this, is, this is iron brew extra, because the woman said it makes you talk Scottish when you have a sip of it. Don't know how that's possible, but don't believe it one bit. Ooh, up your kilt, you wee lassie. Don't you come fuck, don't, nearly swore, don't you come talking to me like that. Because I will not have it. We lassie, you now get yourself to bed. Why is my telly on up there? Has someone been in my room while I've been out? I really hope not. Good night, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic sleep like I plan to. And um, I won't introduce you to my cellmate up there because I'm, I'm pretty sure they're fast asleep. Edie McCready, are you fast asleep? Yeah, she's not responding, so we'll catch up in the morning and um, I hope you have plenty of energy because it's going to be so fun. <laughs> Alexa, could you turn off the lights, please? Morning, everyone. We've just gone out of the bunk bed. Oh, you think you're getting away? I can't prove you wrong. Anywhere I stay. Hey, it's a bird on the dance floor. You better not spill the groove, DJ. We're gonna get in the shower now, gonna use my umbrella. Look at me, I'm in my, I've got some thermals. <laughs> what a granddad. I don't know what I was thinking, but when I came, for today, all I packed was this jumper. Right. And this overshirt, just with a normal jacket. And this morning I thought, I'm gonna be freezing today. But, what I haven't told you, is that for this trip, I went to an outdoor shop and I got a new outfit for tomorrow because we're, we're doing an outdoor activity tomorrow. So I got a bear house fleece, a big bear house comfy coat. I got some proper bear house walking shoes and I got a bear house hat and gloves. So rather than go cold today, I'm just going to wear some of tomorrow's items today. So when I put, I'm gonna put my phone in front of the camera and when I bring it away, I'm gonna be dressed like a hiking genius. <laughs> Look at me. I would walk 500 miles in I would walk 500 more. I look the part, don't I? Although, Bear Gauss, if you are watching um, and you do wanna sponsor me, just comment below. 
and subscribe. Thanks. Right, we're back in business. It is half past eight in the morning and we're hitting the day while it's young. Over there is where we saw yesterday. That is the Edinburgh Castle there. I, showed, I told you I'd show you it in, in the daytime. Do you know what though? I don't think I'd ever get bored looking at that if I lived here. Anyway, you can't take over the world without uh, uh, lining your old tummy. And there's a Weatherspoons up here. So what better place to have your brekkie than a Weatherspoons to kickstart the day. Cheap and cheerful. <sighs> Off we head in. The Weatherspoons here are clearly a bit more upmarket than the one that um, because the one the one in Hull where I live, every time you walk in it's got a load of uh, chips trampled into the carpet and stuff. You wanna see this place? It looks like bloody looks like bloody Royal Albert Hall. Like it's got two big thingies up here. I'm gonna try and take you to the top up there and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you around properly because you don't realise how posh this is. <laughs> Hopefully the prices haven't been I haven't been pumped up, you know what I mean? Mind you, I'm only getting jam on toast. <laughs> you'll be watching that clip thinking why are you gone to Scotland and showing us in a, a Weatherspoons but I can't believe how much it, how posh it is I think it looks like a bit of an opera house and I got an, I got this J2O and I got my jam and toast five pound oh one cheapest um cheapest breakfast I think I've ever had so we're gonna rifle this down like us men do eating jam and toast and then on to our first attraction of the day. Cheers, everyone. Or should I say, cheers, you wee lassie. Do you want to fight with me? <sighs> that was awkward. The ice fell out my mouth. Oh, no, I never threw it back in my glass. <laughs> now the belly's full. Hey, do you know, do you know in there? When I was in there, I thought, while I was getting videos of that building, I thought, I'll ask if I can go on the balcony and just get a shot from, you know, down below. Thinking they'd just go, oh yeah, of course, just run up there, mate. Yeah, the bloke went, ah. Oh. You can't go up there unless it's fully staffed on the third floor, I'm afraid. And I said, I said, why? I said, I'll only be, I'll, I said, I'll only be like two minutes. He said, but if you tumble over, I said, well, I felt like saying bloody hell, I'm, I don't have vertigo. I'm able to see, keep on my two feet. I'm not Gary. <laughs> She'd tumble over. Oh. Anyway, the first place we're going to is a place in Edinburgh called um, Camera Obscura World of Illusions. And basically, it's, it's a building and it's got a few floors and it's got a load of optical illusions and stuff in there. So I thought that's a nice fun way to start the day just ease you in slightly before the air uh, before the big stuff so we're heading over there now and hopefully it's not too busy with it being so early in the morning i always remember when i was younger my mum had a book at home called the magic eye which was loads of optical illusions and i always used to like stare at them do you know until you can see them go all 3d I literally love them kind of like uh, books and stuff. Well, I don't love them, do I? Because I don't own one. So if I loved them that much, I'd go and get one myself. So I'm, I am fibbing a tiny bit, but when there's one put in front of me, I do like to partake. <laughs> to the first floor there's six floors in total and look everywhere they're just little illusion things that catch your eye but make your eyes go real funny i'm excited for this have i come into a nursery what's with a long face <laughs> just look the same there with my pinhead oh ah.
this thing that I've come this thing that I've come across is dangerous. So you put something under there and it magnifies it by 50 times on the screen. It says on the thing, what is in your pockets, put something bright underneath it to see it 50 times. So rather than sticking something out of pockets under it, I stuck my finger under it. Big mistake. Look how dirty my finger is. But you can see all the crust and stuff around my finger. <laughs> I feel like I need to go back to the room for a scrub. That one's Indy, that one. She's got two personalities, Indy. There you go. Yeah. Literally so impressed that on my phone, I'm able to pick up these illusions. I didn't know if it would be to do with like the human eye, but you, you can see it on the camera, so I'm absolutely buzzing. And that means you don't have to come here and spend 25 quid, but you do all owe me a couple of pound. And then when you go, when you look through these things, they turn into Christmas trees and stuff. Whoa, you can see me on that part. Oh, you can see me on that part. Hey guys. Hey, you guys. <laughs> on this part here, it's, it says mirror 3D. So there's a picture of Edinburgh and it says, put your nose to the red line and look straight ahead. Does it look 3D? So this is where you put your nose and um, it goes all 3D and like jumps out at you. But I was just like this. And then someone came in on my right and went, all right, mate. <laughs> I was like, sorry, sorry, I was doing the, the challenge. <laughs> I've just been speaking to a man who's working here and these are all cameras around Edinburgh. Well, around this building, basically. And you can zoom in on the, the toggles and stuff. Look how much you can zoom in on people. This one is for outside there. Let's see if we can, how much we can zoom in to someone's face. Like, look how clear that is as well. Where are them people? Look. Look at that, that's, I don't know, should this be legal? <laughs> Look, hello. They don't even know I'm watching them. Let's see how much more we can go. Stay still. Stay still. That's as far as it goes, but that is, that is pretty crazy, isn't it? Oh, he's freezing. <laughs> the man who I was talking to at here did also say, there's a rooftop one, and he said, be really careful because, um, there was people on the roof the other day and people in here was zooming in on the person's phone and there was swiping away on Tinder. <laughs> so you gotta be careful. Right, this thing is a thermal camera. When you walk in front of it, it shows you which part is the hottest. It says on the wall, which part of you is the hottest. I'll let you, I'll show you which part. I mean, it doesn't come as any of a surprise. It doesn't come as a surprise because I am a bit of a stallion. But there's a certain part of my body which is highlighted in red, which the camera seems to think is pretty damn hot. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about the face. I'm talking about Downey. We've got a bit of a hot bit going on. <laughs> So I've come up to this one and this gentleman here. Hi. What's your name, sorry? Isaac, nice to Isaac, meet you. Isaac, Isaac Angelo. Isaac has said there's a trick uh, where we both use our hands and apparently it's going to give me an electric shock. An electric shock. Like and send it to the floor. Yeah, exactly. Will it do that? It'll wake you up, man. Will it? Yeah, it'll give you, it'll, yeah. All right, come on then. Put some hair on you. Okay, so pick one hand on this one. Yeah. And I'll put my hand here. Now, if you're happy for me to tap your other hand, you will get a bit of spark. Yeah, go on then. Happy to do yeah. it. Three, two, one. Oh, we don't have a connection. Don't we? No, I think it might be the tripod. Do you want to try? Because I've just done hand yeah, gel. Sure, yeah. yeah. Oh, you, you're, you're, you're really adamant yeah. to shock me, aren't you? <laughs> Let me right. just use more of a guinea pig okay. here. Go on oh. then. So you took my hand. Do you get yeah. a shock as well? Yeah. Oh! Oh! <laughs>
I got it that time. That worked out for me, man. My, my heart was like pounding. <laughs> I'll take it personally. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we just don't have a connection, Isaac. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry that there's quite a lot of spinny things in this room and if you sat there feeling on. Oh, look, I'm on a football pitch. Watch. As I was saying before I got distracted by football, doesn't sound like me, does it? There's this, there's a lot of spinny things in here, so I'm sorry if it's making you feel sick. But I'm trying to, sh I'm, I want to show you all the cool things because there's so many different things that I like. I don't know, I've never been anywhere like this before. But let's see if this one works. So I've got to stand above this and spin it as fast as you can and you've got to look at the centre. I don't think this will work in real life. But when you do that and look at the centre for a bit, then when I step on the side, you should be able to see horses running. Oh, you can vaguely see it maybe. Some of the illusions say, like, sit opposite a friend or do this with a friend to dump. I don't have any with me. <laughs> it's really weird, this place. You do... Oh! So it's... Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> I was going to start again and pretend that didn't happen. I got it. I went, I went, ah! Oh! Because Edinburgh Castle's just there again. But let me show you the views from the top of here. basically a nearly 200 year old device that requires sunlight to operate. Mm, sunlight. We get a lot of sunlight here in Scotland. <laughs> Not really. What you're looking at right now is a live view of the city. I was just um, like looking in there and then he just came in and said, you wanna, you want a tour? A personal tour? And I think before I got a chance to say yes or no, he shut the doors and set the lights off. I thought I was gonna get beat up. What a nice man, though. And here we have the castle. And next to the castle is where our owner lived, Sir Geddes. And do you know what he did right at the very end? He made the windows really tiny. <laughs> Expelliarmus! Abracadabra! I sat, I sat on a chair because the next place I'm going to, you've got to book tickets. So I sat on a chair thinking it was just a normal chair and it starts making fat noises and everyone in the room's looking at me. <laughs> but you could actually smell poo a bit as well, so I don't know if it let off a bit of a stink. I had to get out of the room quick though because I was so bloody embarrassed. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed our first place, but the next one is so excited for someone like me because I'm really interested in like we like weird kind of history and we are going to St. the real St. Mary King's Close right and if you don't know what that is basically in Edinburgh there's a full city that is underground and when the plague hit they totally abandoned it and left everybody to die down there basically and then they boxed it all off and built on top of it which is where i am right now filming but they allow visitors down there for an ozzy and i just think how, how how weird that there was like life underground where we are now and we get to see it um in hull where i'm from there is loads of underground tunnels and stuff and i always think I always think, I wish they'd like open it up and do tours under there, but they never bloody do. So this is the second best thing. Actually, it's probably the first best thing because this is a full city underground. So let's see what it's all about. Apparently it's, apparently it's spooky. 
but everyone knows I am, I'm not afraid of no ghosts. Now this building didn't become the city chambers until 1811. Before that, it was known as the Royal Exchange, and it was a big indoor marketplace. But before that, this area was the site of four closes. Now, a close, if you don't know, it's just a very narrow street with tall buildings on both sides. And we had four here, as I said. So we had Mary King's Close, obviously. We also had Street's Close, Pearson's Close, and Allen's Close as well. And they were home to all sorts of different people, families, businesses, the rich, the poor. It was a, a big mix. I have just come out of the Mary King's Close. They did a health and safety video that you all had to watch, the group had to watch at the beginning of it. And on the health and safety video, the first thing that they said was, you are not allowed to video or record anything under here. So I was like, hmm, this doesn't really work well for my vlog. Luckily, I was a bit cheeky, I was a bit sneaky, and I stayed at the back and managed to get some little bits of footage Hopefully I wasn't breaking the law or anything like that. If you do come to Edinburgh, I definitely recommend going there because it is it is so like unique and interesting to think that where I'm walking now, people was living like, I don't know, like 10 meters down. It's, it's crazy. Okay, so now you've seen that and I've seen that. It's um, dinner time. Ooh, I can't wait for some food. Well, that would be if I wasn't gonna eat haggis. Like I said yesterday, Carrie's mum is from Scotland. And I said, so I, oh, I'm gonna get haggis. I'm gonna have to try it. I really don't want to. And um, she said, oh, you should get white pudding. You can't beat a white pudding supper. And I thought, what's a white pudding supper? Well, I asked her, she said, oh, it's oatmeal fried. So I said, what, so it's like porridge fried with chips. I think I'll pass, thanks. This place behind me is called the Haggis Box. And that is where I'm gonna sit and have some farm dining. Apparently it's the best place in Edinburgh for haggis. I don't know how you can possibly pick a best place because I've just seen a picture of it and it looks like dirt. What can we do for you? I'm just wanting to get some haggis. Yeah, you've come to the right place. Bro. Is that the right place? Am yeah. I at the right place? Yes, you are. Um, I don't know how I, do I just get it on its own or? So the way that we serve it, we serve haggis, napes and taddies as like one like meal. Uh, haggis item. and what, sorry? Um, So napes, which are turnips or sweets. Okay, um, right. Got a lot of different names. Yeah. And then taddies, which is just mashed potatoes. Oh, that's okay, cool. So those three things come as like one dish. Yeah. Haggis, napes and taddies. And then the only other thing you would need to decide is which sauce you'd like. Okay. Um. What so, sauces is there? So we've got two I've never ones. tried it, so I'm like throwing oh, myself in the deep end here. Yeah, no, you're all good, man. We'll look after you. Um, so the sauce that we usually recommend, that's the most popular one, is the whiskey and mustard cream. Okay. And then if you weren't so sure about that, we've also got a red wine and beef gravy. Oh, yeah, that sounds better. All right, cool. Yeah, that sounds better. So um, you're not a vegetarian or anything, are no, you? No, I'm not vegetarian. Sweet no. ass. So that would just be one traditional haggis would be uh, red wine sauce. And what is what actually is haggis? So, um, haggis is the heart, liver, and lungs of a sheep. Oh, that sounds um, nice. Yeah, cool. Uh, <laughs> Do well, you like it? I like it, yeah. yeah. So, um, you can probably tell from my accent, I'm not from Scotland. Yeah, yeah. I've been here for about three and a half months. I had never eaten haggis until I started working here, and I liked it straight now, away. Now you just eat it every day. I try not to every day, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Is it I, bad? Is it unhealthy? I, I don't know. It's probably good for you. I don't actually know. Do you? The muffin man. Do you don't know? Well, I feel like meats and tatties aren't too bad. It's like Do you like it as well? I really like it. Really? Well, I like try and limit how much I have it because I don't want to... It's boiling. Yeah, it's boiling. What would you, if I like, before I try it, if I asked you what had to describe what it tastes of, how could you describe it? Yeah, a lot of people... <laughs> Your face looks like you're disgusted by it. Well, like, if you think about the ingredients, you don't want to eat it. But like, 
we get quite a few people that come through from like main like continental Europe, and they often say they're like, oh, this is like like black pudding. Or yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Like See, I've, so, I've 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 never tried black pudding either. So oh, okay. no. So it's quite it's quite like savory. Um, okay. I'd say um, the the sauce kind of gives it a little bit of a sweetness. The neeps are a little bit sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Basically, usually what I say is, if you like meat, yeah, you'll like yeah. Well, I do like meat, so that'll be fine. It's that'll like be fine. I, I think I'm really anxious in case I don't like it and no, I waste it. So please don't hate me if I, I waste it. Understand you can eat it if you want off the plate. People come through and they're like, I'm really keen to try it, but I don't want you to tell me what it is until after. Yeah, I've yeah. See, I'm being nosy and want to know like everything because I'm that scared. No, you're fine. Um, I I can completely understand you being a little apprehensive, but I, like I'd say 95 percent of the people that come through here that try it for the first time. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, occasionally we clear a bold up that's unfinished, but I'd say just about everyone likes it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Did you want? You didn't want anything to drink. You're all good. Um, no, I will take a drink. What have we got? I'll have some. I'll have some iron brew as well. Is that the right decision? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody's um, given you the right things to order. Yeah. I may as well put on a kill and the next. <laughs> I've not seen anyone with one on either yet. Is it true that like, people don't wear anything underneath? That's a great question. Um, or do you not know I'm unless you go and lift one up? <laughs> You'll have to go ask them. <laughs> I'll just say, can you lift that thing? <laughs> so tell me, is it, is it true? <laughs> Apparently, it will be out soon, so feeling a bit tense now. How dramatic am I, by the way, saying I feel tense? As if I'm gonna, as if I'm doing something super scary, but I actually do feel a bit like, it. oh, I, don't, I can't see me liking it. That's the thing. which is the Scottish word for potato. The middle orange bit is the neeps, which is mashed turnip or sweet. And then the top layer is the haggis part. That's perfect, thank you. Enjoy. It looks divine. <laughs> First impressions is, it smells like, do you know when you have, I don't know, like when you do a soup in a slow cooker, or if you have a Sunday dinner or something like that. It smells like stew. So it doesn't smell so bad. It's not co it's not come out how I was expecting it to come out. I thought it'd be like on a big plate and there'd be like tons of it. So I think it's pretty good. So I'm going to avoid the haggis on the first bite. <laughs> and I'm just going to take a bit of the bottom and the middle and let and go. The bottom and the middle is doable. Right, we're going to have to do the haggis. It's like got... It's like obviously black, but it's got loads of little like jelly lumps in it as well. I don't, I definitely don't think I'm gonna like it. Right. Oh my god, I don't know. Here we go. Right, I've got some haggis. I've got 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 some haggis. Got some of the others. It's just it's falling apart. Right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Oh my god, I hate it. I hate it. Oh my god, that was awful. Ooh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. It's like the texture of it, and because I know what it is, it's like. I don't like it. I am going to be able to eat the rest. I feel so bad. I feel so bad. But it's awful. It's awful. I can feel it all in my teeth. Oh, wow. Oh, nothing usually makes me heave like that, but it's just... The taste of it. Let me just do a tiny bit on its own. I think it's more the. Mm. 
I think it's more the texture than the taste. Like when you bite it, it crumbles up into loads of like gr little bits and grains and stuff and you're just thinking in your head like, is this bit liver or heart or that is dread dreadful. But it's nothing against the haggis box, it's nothing against this place. I'm sure if you like haggis, it's, it's beautiful because it came so well presented. But another delicacy. Not for me. <laughs> you don't like it. <laughs> but it, it's nothing. It's nothing against you. It's the the tasting. But I don't mind the taste. But the texture. Uh, Do you know like the texture? See, like I'm a really picky eater, so I knew I wouldn't like it. Yeah. Like I don't like onions. I don't. Oh, okay. I don't like onions, peppers, anything like that. Right. So the, I like the stuff like underneath. But the haggis itself. It, the, it's like the, the way it breaks apart in your mouth. It's a bit different, right? Yeah, it's it, really it's, different. It kind of makes me think about like, um, I've had some things before that have like quinoa and kind of grains and stuff. In them, yeah. And I find it as a similar kind of texture to that. Yeah. Almost. But uh, I'm sorry. No, no, don't worry. I'm so glad I tried it. Is there any chance I could like box? Do you have yeah, a box? Yeah, we could certainly Because I'll box it up because my, my dad's in my, my room. So oh, I'll take this to him and he'll see what he thinks of it yeah, as well. Yeah, of course. Is I that alright? Sorry to be a pain. No, no, and I'm really sorry I didn't it. like it. I'm sure if you did like haggis, it would be amazing because yeah. it's served like so perfectly. But, so, um, no, I, but I love the iron brew. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I mean, that one's probably uh, more, if not as famous as this. Yeah. So, but no, that's cool. I find um, often with people, because I'm a bit of a fussy eater myself, and I find things, it's either taste or texture. Yeah. And I'm a texture person I'm as well. Te I'm texture. So I totally if, get If that it. was served as like, I don't know, do you know like ham served in a thick slice of meat? Yeah. If that, it was the same taste in that, I can imagine me to like be able to right. eat it, but the way it like breaks in your mouth, just, I don't know, I can't deal with it. Don't worry about it, man. All box <laughs> Thank you, you so much. My dad's not in my room, but I crumbled and I, I, I felt I hate well, like coming to restaurants and wasting food. So I didn't want him to just scrape it in the bin after they just made me it. Um, so don't really know what I'm going to do with it. It's probably just going to stink my bag out. But haggis is tried. I have no idea what these things are, but I've spotted them load, in loads of places on paths where you just walk through them. So I don't have a clue what they are, what the point of them is, because you could still walk through without them there. But on this one. It's got lots of stickers, and you'll remember last episode, we did a shout out for a sticker we found on the back of a toilet door, and we're going to do it on every episode. So we have got a shout out of the episode for this episode. Another exclusive is that I have also ordered some Exploring the Alphabet stickers. So when I go to other cities, probably from the next episode, I will be plastering my stickers everywhere too. And if I had one today, it would be going on there. So let's go see oh, what shout out of the episode is. Sponsored by Joel. Basingstoke Town it is. Can we say, can we say, come on Basingstoke. Come on Basingstoke. Thank you. I my love and By your cool and crystal fountain. And around it I shall fight. All the wild lands of the man. When I tell you that I have got a treat for you coming up next, I am not kidding. I've uh, just come off the phone to our special guest and he's all set to meet us and we're going to be taking part in a lesson and I'm so gassed about it. I am outside the Grey Friars Charteris Centre and I don't think there is, is any reason you should know this place but you will know the thing that is going on inside because there is a man inside and it is called Roddy the Piper he's one of the most famous bagpipers in Edinburgh and he's going to be giving us a half an hour lesson so I'm going to walk in the door now and when I walk out I will be a fully qualified bagpiper. See you in there. This is Ronnie the Piper. Is that how it is? Hi, I'm Ronnie the Piper. This, nice to meet you. This is Ronnie the Piper, and Ronnie is going to give us a quick run through on bagpipes. He's going to play some music for us as well. Yep. And then at the end, I'm going to show him a few things. 
Does that sound right? Uh, sounds an interesting idea. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> he did say that it is effing loud. I won't it swear. Is loud. He said it's really loud, so trigger warning. If you've got your earphones, you take your earphones out. And uh, I'll let you take it away. I guess it's your show. Um, right, keep an eye on his knees because he's got gorgeous knees as well, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right. So basically, bagpipes works. You blow in here. This is the blowpipe. Goes down as a one way return valve in the bottom here. So we've basically got the bag of the bagpipes, this bit here, and then the pipes, which are these bits here. These are the drones. We have two tenor drones and a bass drone. They basically make it sound like wah in the background. Then we've got this bit here, this is where my fingers go, this is where the melody comes from, and there's another reed in here, making four reeds in total, okay? And what you're doing is you're blowing into the bag, and you're squeezing with your arm, and you're creating pressure to get the air through the four different reeds and make them all sound at the same time. Sounds easy, it's not. However, play your wee tune, you might not. <laughs> So when my, when my fingers are going like this, that's me playing the notes which is making the tunes. When I'm squeezing here, that's making like the backing sounds of the bagpipe tunes. I'm with you. Okay? I'm with you. Now it's your turn. Shall we get the other set of bagpipes? Yeah, because right? you've, 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 you've had them peeking in your mouth as well. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, Robbie? Yeah. I don't know if this is a rude question, but I'm not meaning to come across rude, but I've always been... I've, I've, Obviously, people say people with qu uh, kilts wear nothing underneath. Is that a myth? From man to man. Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, so I'm never going to know. <laughs> you look reasonably fit. I'm reasonably just, I just ate a mixed grill before I ate to give you a bit of protein. Perfect. And you had to pour it I had it like you, you, you told me to, so possibly. But here you're a high fan. We'll get into that later. No, no, no. Right. I'm not a high fan. Right. So. This could go on your shoulder, the bag's going up, you were watching what I was doing, right? No, no, I was skipping a bit as well. <laughs> right, you're yeah, blowing this one here. This one? Really hard. You have it really deep in your mouth, are you meant to? Not that far on the best, no. Right. Am I just going to blow straight away? Really hard. I'm just going to take like three or four breaths so you can get this going. I can do it? No. Keep it going! Keep it going! Well, this is the one then. 
I didn't realise there was a... So there's you know, like, the, the bag of the bag yeah. pipes in the <laughs> I was just going to say, I didn't realise there was a bag of the bag pipes. The clue is in the name. Yeah. Has yeah. been my pleasure to entertain you. My name's Roddy the Piper. Thank you very much. Now let's see if you killed Roddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is definitely something I never thought I'd do. And it might uh, motivate you guys to go on and be bagpipers. But if I was going to give some advice, I'd say don't bother unless you want to bust along. Hey, do you know Roddy the Piper? His bagpipes was 115 years old. So there's no wonder he won't let this goon have a go on him, eh? <laughs> and he probably smelt my breath out of the drink for that bloody long. See you soon. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hope you're feeling as bright and cheerful as I am. It is 6.30 a.m. Um, outside is still pitch black. You might hear the telly on in the background because when I stay in hotels, I always put telly on in the background and just let it run all night. And it's real relax. I just find it real relaxing. Like waking up at like four a.m. Just do you know when you just wake up in the middle of the night and having hearing the telly? I think that's really peaceful. And I don't know why I went into that. God, look at my eyes as well. I look about eighty. Anyway, today. We are climbing a mountain. The distance here is Arthur's seat. And to me, it do not look that high. But apparently it's 823 feet high, so it obviously is. Now, with things like this, I always seem to think to myself, ah, oh, do it in half an hour. Like, I had a football match a few months ago. Because I used to play football five years ago, I was like, oh, I don't need to do any fitness. I'll just get straight back into it. And I nearly died on the pitch, went off after five minutes and didn't come back on. So it might be a bit of an eye-opener for, for me. Um, apparently, at the top of it, there's remains of a volcano, uh, which will be interesting to see if I can figure out what is what, because I am a bit thick. I think this is the, the, this is the first time I've actually climbed a mountain and buying all this gear has been the best thing that I've ever done because I can't feel any cold whatsoever. I've got the best thermal thermals on that are all fairy and stuff inside. And there is a wholesome reason why I am going to be climbing this bad boy today, but we'll get onto that whilst we're up the mountain. Only thing I'm not prepared on is food. <laughs> I, I kind of forgot to get any food and my belly's already rumbling. But I have got drinks and I, I have got a dairy deal, a dairy, a dairy deal lunker in my bag. So hopefully that'll keep me going till it's time to get down. Who knows when we get to the top, but there might be an escalator to get down, so I don't have to do it both ways. So Carrie told me I should climb this because when she was younger and she came here, she climbed it. Obviously, she won't be able to do it now. But I thought that because I can do it, it'd be, it'd be a nice thing. It'd be a nice thing to do on her behalf and obviously because I want to do it. She, she said that her dad has got a photo of her somewhere on this, on this mountain, like holding her, holding her up when she was having a wee. So the good thing about that is I know that if I do need to urinate, you can just pee anywhere on the mountain. All right, Cocker, am I going the right way? Am I going the right way? Yeah, the, the smaller one. Yeah, yeah. You go down that way. Uh, not the top, yeah. Okay, the and right, yeah. on that. Oh yeah, it's sandposted. Oh, I'd love a map. Yeah, if you could, I'll end up getting lost otherwise. All the best to you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
<laughs> oh god, I don't know if I could make it. All these nutters running up and down here. Off your head! A bit steeper than it looks. I think I underestimated this. How long have I got left to go? Oh, that's nice though, isn't it? But there's like a track right down the middle of it. You can't tell me, it's surely no one's climbing, um, biking up here. I should have tried doing it on a mountain bike, that would have been entertaining. But I would have ended up down there. There's the sun lock, you can see it rising. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. Just when I showed you where I was going to fall down, it was on a bit of an I think I might have come up with a master plan. Rather than walking down all this tough stuff, could I just slide down there? And cut a bit out? It's still hard walking down, isn't it? If I can just do a roly poly all the way down, it makes a bit of sense to me. It's just what's, what's hardening in the bushes. Is there any rocks? Knowing my luck, I'll, I'd slide down on my bum, straight over a rock rupture your anus. Apparently, I'm only two minutes away. It said on Google it'd take two hours to climb this thing. I've absolutely romped it. It's because of the fitness levels. Sometimes you just gotta beat your chest. Oh, this looks steep. Oh, this looks steep. We can go up that way or we can go that way. Which one looks the hardest? This one looks the hardest to be fair. Look at the acting hard. Now I know I'm nearly, I'm nearly there. Every episode I say to you, I say to you, I am not bothered about views and stuff, you know, it's boring. And then I just bring you to views all the time. I was going to talk about views again. Just keep walking, Joel. Oh, yeah, this is good. I'm on top of the world, eh? I'm on top of the world, eh? <laughs> Sorry, I'll get out of your way. I can't feel my legs, so I'm just having to keep moving. Oh. You just you just ran up here. Yeah, ran and Yeah. If I ended, if I was running, I'd have ended up in that water over there. I've never wanted to stop so much in my life. There's no one in sight, so I'm just taking a breather. I haven't seen one person taking a breather yet, so I'm just stealing one on the sly. Can hear footsteps. Oh, there they are. Ooh, just in time. Is this the top? I made it! I'm alive! I'm gonna give you the 360 views. I can't stop. Oh, here we go. We're on another run of bean. This is easier than going down all the rocks, though. Hey, 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 Ignoring gates. Oh, right when it. Ow! Literally just prickled myself on a thorn bush. How long does it take? <laughs> Only about half an hour. Oh, good there's, a man, there's a man at the top, an Australian man, uh, doing a barbecue as well. Yeah. Up there, yeah, doing sausages up there. So if you get up there quick enough, you can have an hot dog. <laughs> See you soon. Oh, sod, he's gonna be he's good. He's walking like this. This was me an hour ago. He was walking like this. First question: How long does it take? 
to be fair it does it does only take half an hour it doesn't take it doesn't take as long as you think so we have our scores on the doors for edinburgh that's the letting show you the food that i've got i've got a breakfast burrito sausage bacon egg and cheese in this bad boy with probably the best mocha that I've ever seen, I am going to get a cold drink as well because I can't eat, eat hot food with hot drinks. I don't know if that's just a me thing. But first of all, Edinburgh has been amazing. Probably one of my favourite places that I've been. Um, would have been better, even better in the sunshine. But you can't have it all, we always say that. So, accommodation, £92.54. Parking near hotel was £27, which I thought was amazing. Um, that was with discount from the hotel because it was like an external car park and then they validated my ticket. Diesel, £70, so no flights or airport parking included on this trip. Spends was £230, so that's inclusive of all food, all attractions and everything like that. Bringing us a grand total of Four hundred and nineteen. A total of four hundred. A total of four hundred and nineteen pound fifty-four. In that, I got the girls some hot water bottles, which was about thirty quid. I think I was ripped there. So we could have been right down the tiny bit as always, but we've had a great time, and you can't put the price on happiness. So we are five episodes down, five letters down and we have 21 to go. We're nearly in the, uh, we're nearly out of the 20s. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the episode, please watch the other episodes. And there is one more thing left to say. Please come back for more. There's other letters to explore.